What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you are excited to talk about the best subject when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, QB1, Dak Prescott. That's right, Dak Prescott, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't care what the haters say. I don't care what the people who are wrong say. Dak Prescott is one of the best quarterbacks in the national football league it's been a while since we spoke about Dak Prescott obviously um and that's kind of strange right because generally when it comes to talking about the Dallas Cowboys this is the subject and it's strange because he got paid right like the thing we've been talking about happening forever and ever and ever finally happened this offseason a couple of months ago it feels like forever ago it feels like it's way in the rearview mirror but the Dallas Cowboys did pay Dak Prescott this offseason he's the quarterback for America's team for the foreseeable future very good news all the way around but it's kind of been quiet which is strange right it's hard to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and not have any real headlines that go on about you but that's the Dak Prescott way he just shows up he works he works he works and he gets ready and obviously a lot of people are excited about Dak Prescott and his return to the Dallas Cowboys and wondering what things are going to look like when he ultimately gets back onto the field the Cowboys held rookie minicamp last week which is obviously something that happens just for the rookies and some exceptions uh when it comes to players with little to no experience in the nfl uh but we're all waiting for training camp right we know the schedule we know the preseason schedule we know when the dallas cowboys are going to play and remember the cowboys are playing in the pro football hall of fame game this year against the pittsburgh steelers so they will technically get to begin training camp before most other teams in the nfl but what's going to happen when that ultimately does happen mike mccarthy took to the podium last week during the team's rookie mini camp he was obviously asked about his franchise quarterback and whether or not he thinks he's going to be ready for training camp. And he said, I don't see why not. What do you anticipate Doc being able to do for you guys? Um, you would, I, I think he'll do most things. I mean, we're, we're, you know, there's a there's a plan in place that's coordinated with uh, with Britt and, and Jim in the training room. And so, uh, but I know he feels he feels really good. He's 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 really um, has had some excellent workouts. Uh, here the last couple of weeks. So, but I, I see him doing most of the work. Mike McCarthy can sometimes be a man a few words, get straight to the point, right? I don't see why not. And ultimately, this is what we want to hear right now. We want to hear that all signs are a go. Things are looking great for Dak in terms of progress, in terms of health, in terms of getting right, in terms of the foot, the ankle, all that stuff. And we have no reason to doubt him, right? Like, there's literally no reason to doubt Dak Prescott. That is the one lesson that we have learned over the course of his entire career uh, because that's who he is. He's a guy who, like we said, he shows up, he works, he gets it done. That is the Dak Prescott way. Interestingly enough, uh, I do feel like the national narrative on Dak Prescott has kind of caught up to you and me, right? Like, we're the educated Cowboys fan. You know, you're educated because you watch us here at Blog of the Boys. Make sure you subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. We have several videos that come out every week, all sorts of discussions, all sorts of fun times. We have film reviews. We have lots of film reviews already in the vault when it comes to players the Cowboys drafted many more are on the way we're working very hard for you we never sleep because we hustle 24 7 365 because that's what you deserve but uh something else we do we write articles at blogoftheboys.com this week I wrote about uh what pro football focus did PFF ranked all of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL as of now and keep in mind this is subject to change because you know some of the quarterbacks we're starting now are going to you know be different when it comes to October or whatever the case may be some guys will get you know benched on Unfortunately, football is a sport where people are going to get hurt. But as of now, this is how PFF sees the top 10. And what do you know? Dak Prescott is right there. One through 10, in case you want to hear my beautiful voice, read them out loud. Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. Tom Brady, the reigning Super Bowl champion, now seven-time Super Bowl champion. Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers, probably not for too long um, at number three. Real bummer, you know, as Cowboys fans, to see this whole situation with Aaron Rodgers go down. It's almost like Mike McCarthy wasn't the whole problem in Green Bay. Huh. Interesting. But anyway, number four, Russell Wilson. Remember, like, speaking of things that happened in the rearview mirror, remember when Russell Wilson was connected to the Cowboys as a potential trade target? Man, this offseason's been wild. Uh, Number five, Deshaun Watson. Who knows when or if he will ever play in the NFL again? That's obviously a hard situation to figure out right now uh, as the NFL continues to, you know, do their thing there. Uh, Number six, Josh Allen. I have a take here that uh, saw a lot of tweets come my way this week. Number seven is where Dak Prescott ultimately ranks as of now in the 
eyes of pro football focus. Number eight, Lamar Jackson, former MVP himself. Number nine, also a former MVP in Matt Ryan. I buy the Atlanta Falcons in 2021, by the way. I do think they're going to be very good, uh, although they'll lose to the Cowboys because, duh. Uh, and at 10, Baker Mayfield, a very high ranking for Baker. Uh, no Justin Herbert in the top 10. I think that would surprise some people. Um, but other than that, I mean, this list is kind of hard to you know, argue with or disagree with in terms of the 10, in terms of the, the just 10 quarterbacks that are on this list. I do think that you're looking at kind of a consensus top 10, depending on who you ask, or whatever the case may be, obviously. Um, but so when I wrote about this at blogonthevoice.com this past week, and I tweeted about it, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RG Ochoa. Uh, I said that there are three quarterbacks in the NFL today that I would take ahead of Dak Prescott. Like if I was building a team right now and you said, RJ, you can have any player on this list right here and that can be your quarterback obviously i would take patrick mahomes and i know that you agree with me there i would take aaron Rodgers, and i'm talking about just who they are as quarterbacks i'm not um you know admittedly not factoring in potential locker room situations obviously again there's a lot going on there we don't know how that's going to end with aaron Rodgers and the green bay packers but i mean he's the reigning mvp He's one of the best quarterbacks in terms of pure talent of all time. I know that's painful. It's salt in our wounds, but it's still the case. Nevertheless, I would take Aaron Rodgers, and I would take Josh Allen. I really believe in Josh Allen. That's what uh, I, I saw all your tweets. Believe me, I did. Um, and I know the sample size is small, and I'm not at all trying to, you know, doubt Dak Prescott. In fact, I'm about to lift him up, so just give me a second. I just we've We've never seen a sustained season from Dak like what Josh Allen did last year, which is not a knock against that. It's just noting how incredible and how exemplary Josh Allen's 2020 season was. Now, odds are that he will regress from that in 2021. So if you want to take Dak Prescott over Josh Allen, that's okay. I can understand that logic. I just wanted you to understand where I was coming from. But I would not take Tom Brady in the current moment over Dak Prescott. Obviously, he's the GOAT. He's done it all. He's won a billion Super Bowls. He's more accomplished, whatever. Nobody's arguing that. But we're talking about who they are, what their functions are as NFL quarterbacks today. If you're taking Tom Brady over Dak Prescott, you're not paying attention to the right things. I would not take Russell Wilson, which also means I would not take Russell Wilson over Josh Allen, obviously. Um, I think, you know, Russell, the, the Seahawks, that's another interesting situation, right, with kind of like Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Is he going to be traded? Is he going to be playing elsewhere in 2021? Because now the Chicago Bears, uh, they've drafted just and Fields are no longer a home for Russell Wilson. I think as Cowboys fans, this is something I've talked about uh, on one of our podcasts at Blogging the Boys, the NFC East mixtape. Um, you know, my, my friend, my colleague over at Bleeding Green Nation, SB Nation's Philadelphia Eagles website, Brandon Lee Gotten, he believes that Russell Wilson could potentially be the quarterback of the New York Giants in 2022, but we'll save that for a different day, a different discussion. Either way, Russell's, you know, I guess argument or, or people's argument for Russell is that Seattle hasn't done enough to help him, whatever. The offensive line is so bad. A lot of the sacks that Russell takes in Seattle are his fault. Sacks are a quarterback stack, people. Um, so, I mean, I would take Dak. I would take Russ or, uh, Josh Allen over Russell Wilson. So it is what it is. I, I mean, again, just talking about football here, I would not take Deshaun Watson over Dak Prescott or Josh Allen, obviously. Um, so that's what it is. And I think, I think most people, I was talking about this, the national narrative has kind of caught up to the idea that Dak Prescott is an elite quarterback, right? I think, you know, the last couple of years, wherever you've looked nationally, whatever national radio show or, or publication you're reading or, or whatever the case may be, a lot of people kind of had Dak in this second tier. Um, and, and to be clear here, I think that the tiers, there's Patrick Mahomes' tier, and, and he's on that tier all by himself. And then maybe there's, you know, after a gap, there's a little bit of a tier that just belongs to maybe Aaron Rodgers in our current moment. And after that, I think the tier includes Dak. I think it includes Josh Allen. Maybe you can put Russell and Deshaun Watson as a football player in that tier if you really want to. But the point is, Dak is in that group. He's in that elite. He's in the, the mix as far as the best quarterbacks in the NFL are concerned. And I think a year ago, if you'd asked somebody, would you rather have Dak Prescott or Lamar Jackson? Obviously, Lamar coming off of his MVP campaign in 2019. And people would have said Lamar. And I, I firmly believe in Lamar Jackson. And I think you do, too, because you're an educated fan here you're watching that blog and the boys on our YouTube channel. But um, we've just seen a little bit more from Dak Prescott in that sense. And I, I think a lot of people are worried about Lamar Jackson, and that's fine if you are. I think he'll prove you wrong in 2021. But I would just take Dak over Lamar, and, and that's just kind of the way I break in that particular argument. I don't know anybody that's taken Matt Ryan or Baker Mayfield, both fine quarterbacks in their own right, over Dak Prescott. The point here is that Dak is among the very best quarterbacks in the National Football League. And if you don't get that, you know, what's going on? What's Why are you wasting your time not getting it? Seriously. I mean, Dak Prescott, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But don't 
don't take my opinion. If, if, if you don't believe my opinion, don't don't just take my opinion, all right? I'm just our Jojo, right? Let's ask, or really, let's listen to the opinion of one of the greatest players in Dallas Cowboys history as of late. That's right, Sean Lee, uh, the general who retired himself this offseason. It's been a busy offseason, like I said. Sean Lee uh, called it a career just before the 2021 NFL draft, which incidentally saw the Cowboys draft another linebacker out of Penn State in Micah Parsons. Sean Lee, this stunned me. Um, you know, we referenced... Uh, national radio shows, national publications. Sean Lee was on The Herd this week. That's right, The Herd with Colin Coward. Um, I'm sure that you're aware that Colin Coward has had some takes about Dak Prescott himself over the years. Uh, Sean Lee was there. They talked about a variety of things. Uh, But very interestingly, Sean Lee uh, was asked when he kind of bought in to the idea of Dak Prescott. Obviously, Dak was drafted in 2016, fourth-round pick, 135th overall. Uh, And you will recall that at training camp that year, obviously, Tony Romo was the starter coming off of the injury plague season in 2015. He had only started four games, and Kellen Moore was technically his primary backup. The Cowboys actually tossed out different ideas over that whole run-up through training camp of signing Nick Foles and and getting another veteran in the mix, but they ultimately went with the rookie in Dak Prescott, and Kellen Moore got hurt in training camp uh, before Tony Romo got hurt in the preseason game in Seattle, which elevated Dak Prescott from third stringer because he had beaten out Jameel Showers. Again, this is a throwback kind of day, Um, and he was suddenly QB2, and, and we all know the rest of the story but you know i know that you bought in to dak prescott right away at least i think i do I, i'm gonna ask him i'll put you on the spot here in a moment but sean lee well let's just let's let's find out when sean lee bought into dak prescott and i want you to take me to rookie year fourth round pick he has a great game in los angeles in the preseason yeah, preseason yep and lit it up and i mean the world changed hey, cowboy fans would not hear it when when was the buy-in for you? Was it at pr- practice where you were like, boy, this dude is a leader. This is our guy. You know, during that training camp, you know, I, Romo, he, he would take every couple of days off. And Dak was the quarterback. So normally with a rookie quarterback on defense, we're like, we're getting picks all day today. We're about to beat the <laughs> offense up. And so a two-minute drill late in practice, I'm like, I know the play. I know what's coming. It's a slant to Dez. I'm going to go get this. I break on it. I go to get it. He puts it on the back shoulder of Dez, perfectly thrown, no problem. And he had done that all practice. And it, it wasn't an issue. It was his first time really with the, the ones against the NFL defense. And he made it look easy. I mean, that, that's been him from the start is how cool he is, how composed he is. And another thing is how he faces adversity. Anytime there's adversity, he says, bring it on. And that's why I know with the injury he has, he's coming yeah. back better than he was. Very, very, very cool story from Sean Lee. Um, talking about training camp, obviously, and, and seeing Dak with Dez. I told you it was a throwback kind of day. Uh, and that preseason game in Los Angeles that Colin mentioned, actually, uh, that was, if you'll recall, that was the NFL's first game back in Los Angeles because the Rams had just moved that offseason. Jared Goff was the number one overall pick at the time. I know you know that. Uh, And so it was literally, it was a preseason game, but it was the first game to take place in the NFL's return to LA. Lucky Whitehead got the game started off uh, with a bang. I mean, seriously, throwback memory of throwback memories there. And Dak Prescott actually threw a touchdown to Des Bryant in that game. And Des was another person who was of high interest that offseason because he had missed a lot of time in 2015, just like Tony Romo did. And so the moment that Des caught that touchdown, it was, okay, Des back you know in that moment really there wasn't a whole lot of focus on Dak just because that was the first preseason game it wasn't until the third week of the preseason that Tony Romo would be hurt um, and that Dak Prescott would be casted into the spotlight as the team starter Um, and a lot of people doubted a lot of people were nervous about Dak Prescott and so I asked you I told you I'll put you on the spot did you believe did you believe in Dak Prescott way back in 2016, his rookie year? Because it's it's kind of nuts to look back on the takes, right? The takes of 2016. Obviously, Ezekiel Elliott had an incredible rookie year, uh, wound up winning Offensive Player of the Year uh, in the NFL because Dak Prescott won Offensive Rookie of the Year. And, I mean, people really thought – like, it's it's silly to look back and say people really thought that – uh, Carson Wentz or Jared Goff were either just as good or better than Dak Prescott. But beyond that, and I don't mean this as a slight to Zeke in any way, 
people really ask the question, is Dak Prescott only as good as he is because of the run game? People really thought that. And that's kind of wild to think back on. And obviously, you know, that 2016 offensive line, I think, is the best one that Dak Prescott has ever had so far in his career. Um, that was when this this unit that we still know and love, obviously, was, was a little bit closer to their prime than they are now. Obviously, injuries have taken their toll. We're talking about five years later. Um, and, you know, Things were, were kind of, you know, that was early in Lyle Collins's career, too. I mean, things were really kind of just starting to assimilate for that group. Um, but I think the moment, the moment that people believe that the buy in moment, if, you know, Sha if Sean Lee bought in at, at training camp, perhaps, I mean, you know, not, not trying to say Sean Lee's a lie, but if Sean Lee bought in at training camp, I will tell you when I bought in, and you can tell me if you agree or not. I can hear you, trust me, wherever you are. Um, it was the game in Pittsburgh. It, it was the game in Pittsburgh in November of that year, two weeks before Thanksgiving or a week and a half before Thanksgiving. Uh, the Cowboys went up to Pittsburgh. Obviously, at the time, the Steelers' offense was still, you know, moving and grooving uh, back then with Ben Roethlisberger, Le'Veon Bell, and Antonio Brown. And remember, Antonio Brown actually tried to get Anthony Brown, who was also a rookie that year, um, on a fake. And Anthony Brown, he, you know, he ultimately lost that rep, but he did not bite on, you know, the fake uh, snap that or the the fake spike that Ben Roethlisberger tried to get. Um, um, still, though, I mean, it was an incredible game. You'll recall Zeke had a great screen pass touchdown. And uh, speaking of Lucky Whitehead, he kind of ran in with him. Zeke had the game winner. I mean, thanks to a huge block by Gavin Escobar. But that was a huge game for the the confidence boost, I think, in all of us for Dak Prescott. We all, you know, there were there were moments in the ride up to that. Uh, there were great games and, and great wins. And uh, the first win, which was in Washington, remember the Cowboys did lose in week one that year to the New York Giants because Terrence Williams did not get out of bounds. I told you there's a lot of memories on today's uh, video here on our on our channel um, and th that week that week two win in Washington was really impressive and then the week three win at home against Chicago I mean there was a lot of just kind of momentum building up but it was that Pittsburgh win that really went a long way in fact it was the week after that Pittsburgh win I believe it was the Tuesday after that Tony Romo gave his famous football's a meritocracy speech and, and kind of conceded to Dak Prescott and accepted that he was the backup and the next week the Cowboys hosted the ball Baltimore Ravens the Sunday before Thanksgiving and Tony Romo was in uniform as the team's backup quarterback and everything has been totally completely Dak Prescott ever since which has been a lot of fun and I think that you know you certainly you got to a point where you believed in Dak Prescott maybe it took you a while maybe it took you a little bit longer maybe that 2017 season spooked you a little bit but Dak Prescott came roaring back in 2018 obviously after the Cowboys traded for Amari Cooper and a lot of people held that against Dak Prescott but the reality is that all elite quarterbacks need help. In fact, let's put this uh, this quarterback rankings group back up here. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, we're going just let's go down this list here. Patrick Mahomes as Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, Miko Hardman. I mean, you know, the Chiefs are not afraid to give the best quarterback in the world a lot of help in their offense. Tom Brady in Tampa obviously has Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh, Gronk. I mean, OJ Howard, you know, Leonard Fournette, playoff Lenny, Super Bowl Lenny. I mean, Rojo. I mean, the number of weapons in Tampa is so hard to calculate. Aaron Rodgers, that's kind of the reason why he wants out of Green Bay, right? Is he doesn't have a whole lot of weapons or a lot of weaponry, but he does have Devontae Adams, who is maybe the best wide receiver in the NFL. I mean, he's certainly in that conversation. Maybe he's like the third best at the absolute worst, but he is very, very, very good. Russell Wilson. I mean, it's no coincidence that the whole let Russ cook thing really took off after DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett kind of got there together. They're really the most help that Seattle's given him over the course of his career. Thing, things were a little bit rougher early on for Russell Wilson. Deshaun Watson, um, talking about the football again, um, you know, in a football sense, obviously hates the team because of the fact that they traded away DeAndre Hopkins and who is among the best receivers in the NFL himself. Uh, Josh Allen, you look at a team who is not afraid to help their guy. I mean, went out and traded for Stephon Diggs, signed Cole Beasley, even this offseason, still adding, signed Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, after Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, we're still waiting on the Ravens to give Lamar appropriate help, but that's like every football fan's cry, right, is give Lamar help. Yes, they drafted Rashad Bateman, cool they signed Sammy Watkins but they should have gone out and gotten Kenny Galladay or somebody I mean the fact that the Ravens are refusing to help their quarterback who is still on his rookie contract by the way is really kind of unacceptable but it is what it is Matt Ryan I mean we don't have to talk about you know a team who's afraid to help their dude I mean obviously have over the course of his career given him Julio Jones I have no idea why they would want to trade him um, they had given him Roddy White technically Tony Gonzalez I mean uh, Calvin Ridley as of late Kyle Pitts 
I mean, the Falcons are not at all afraid to help their dude. And Baker Mayfield's team traded for Jarvis Landry, traded for Odell Beckham Jr., obviously Nick Chubb. I mean, the, the Browns have been totally unafraid to add help. So anybody that tells you, oh, well, Dak needed Amari to be great or whatever in 2018, just, just tell them that they're wrong because that's silly. That's ridiculous because look at all of these dudes. All of these guys have some of the best offensive skill players working at their behalf in the NFL or for their behalf, I should say, uh, as an overall offense. And that's it's almost like even the best football players need help because football is a team sport. So, you know, it is what it is. But uh, while football is a team sport, there are some individual awards, some individual accolades. And you might have seen this week that Dak Prescott is the favorite to win Comeback Player of the Year. That's right. Dak Prescott, the betting favorite, according to our friends at DraftKings, to win the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year award, which was won by Alex Smith this past year. Um, obviously, nobody will have a story like Alex Smith in terms of winning Comeback Player of the Year. Um, and this is really kind of a weird award when, when you look at the NFL and the people they've handed it out to over the last couple of years. Um, looking at the odds as an example here, Dak Prescott, plus 175. We'll get to that in a moment. Saquon Barkley, Joe Burrow, Christian McCaffrey, Nick Bosa, Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold, Derwin James, Von Miller, who missed the whole season last year, and Joe Mixon. Um, there are, you know, different ways to look at this, obviously. But, I mean, how – why are Carson Wentz and Sam Darnold here? That's, that's what I mean about the award being weird and loose in the eyes of the NFL. We know that Dak Prescott, Saquon Barkley, Joe Burrow um, – you know, Derwin James, Von Miller, you know, we know that they're coming back from injuries that they had to miss most of the season last year. What did what is Carson Wentz coming back from? Like being really bad? Like that would be so stupid if he won comeback player of the year. What is Sam Darnold coming back from? Maybe and kind of I guess Carson Wentz too, that his his team not believing in him, being traded, right? Like what 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 are they coming back from that is so noble in in the lens of comeback player of the year? And so I'm a believer, and I think you are too, because again, I know you're a smart person, that this award should be won by somebody who's legitimately coming back from something, not just being really, really, really bad. Um, so in that sense, Dak Prescott, the heavy favorite as of now, plus 175. If you're not into sports gambling or gambling like this, this just means if you bet $100 on Dak Prescott to win Comeback Player of the Year, and he does, you win $175, plus 175. So if you bet on Saquon Barkley, Joe Burrow, or Christian McCaffrey, you win $600, which obviously means they are longer shots to win this award than Dak Prescott. And so I think that's fair. And I think that when you look at awards, kind of like the weirdness that the NFL has when they calculate these types of things, the unfortunate reality when it comes to awards, and this is really true when it comes to MVP or Coach of the Year and things like that, is you need some narrative and you need some juice. And that's not a bad thing. But Dak Prescott in this particular conversation here plays for the Dallas Cowboys. He is one of the most popular players in the NFL now. And that's something that's really changed over the course of the last year, like we've talked about. Um, so the fact that he plays for a really popular team, the fact that he himself is a very popular player, the fact that he's going to be on national television a lot, especially late down the stretch. Consider that the Cowboys obviously play on Thanksgiving, which is late in the season. They play on the Thursday night afterwards in New Orleans. They have a Sunday night game late in the season against the Washington football team. The math is here. I mean, I, if and, and the other thing is like it's generally most awards are it's generally a quarterback driven thing. Um, I think Joe Burrow would have to have a really, 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 really impressive um, season to, to win it. And, and, and Dak would have to not do something impressive. Um, I, I think Von Miller is a candidate, I think, because he's got a lot of juice himself and he's coming back. And, and the Broncos, you know, you could kind of see that team maybe not being great um offensively and, and kind of being carried by their defense and so potentially von miller is kind of like the face of that so sometimes that is, is something that can work but ultimately i don't see how you don't have dak prescott winning comeback player of the year so i'll ask you shout it out wherever you are by the way thank you to all of you it was not acdc who sang shout it out loud it was kiss i could have sworn i mean i i I had my bands mixed up. I'm not, you know, I'm not the most like musically centric person there is. Um, so apologies, but thank you to everyone who let me know that it was Kiss who sing. Is it called Shout It or Shout It Out Loud? I think it's called Shout It Out Loud. So I don't, I don't want to upset anybody else, but it was Kiss. Thank you for everybody who helped. Uh, but in the spirit of that, Shout It Out Loud by Kiss, will Dak Prescott win Comeback Player of the Year in 2021? I think he has to. I mean, because I think we all believe in this offense, especially when you consider that Dak Prescott has not even played five full games with CeeDee Lamb in his offense. 
that's nuts when you think about it, right? Like that's really crazy to think about that. We really, we saw Dak for this microscopic amount of time in 2020. And not only was it a microscopic amount of time, but it was like this really chaotic time because the defense was so bad and the offense was great, but the offense was great in this like haphazard way and things were wild and things were crazy. And obviously there were no fans and all the impact of COVID-19, but Seeing Dak Prescott in a full and complete offense that doesn't just have C.D. Lamb for the entire season and the entire duration, but I think that an important component to consider when we talk about Dak Prescott's potential odds, which are plus 175 according to DraftKings, to win comeback player of the year, is Dak is not just back, right? Like that in and of itself obviously is a big deal, but Dak is back with Tyron Smith. Dak is back with Lyle Collins. Dak is back with Blake Jarwin. That's a huge deal here, right? Like I'm not saying that Dalton Schultz was not great in 2020, but we also didn't really even see Dak Prescott with Blake Jarwin. He didn't get a whole game with him. Blake Jarwin was hurt in the first game of the season in Los Angeles. I mean, so people make a lot uh, or, or people, you know, make a big deal about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and how they're bringing back all 22 of their starters from the Super Bowl, blah, 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 blah. That's certainly a big deal. I'm not trying to poo poo that in any way. But the Cowboys are technically bringing back all 11 of their intended starters in 2020, when you really think about it. Like, the intended offensive line in 2020 from left to right was Tyron Smith, Connor Williams. Obviously, you know, the center position was thrown into a little bit of whack with uh, Travis Federick's retirement. But Joe Looney, Tyler Biotish, both were there, both played, whatever the case may be. Zach Martin uh, at right guard, and then Lyle Collins at right tackle. We didn't even see Lyle Collins, right? Like, missed the entire season. Tyron Smith missed basically the entire season. Blake Jarwin was supposed to be Dak Prescott's top tight end. Remember, this feels like forever ago, too. I know Dalton Schultz played great last season, but Blake Jarwin was the one who got a big-time contract extension with the Cowboys. That happened last year. And so, I mean, he was supposed to be – we all saw, obviously, going back to that 2018 season, the game in New York in Week 17 where Blake Jarwin caught three touchdowns, and we were all very excited to see him featured as the prominent and star tight end in this offense because we did not get the chance in 2019 – because the Cowboys decided to bring Jason Witten back. So we didn't even get to see that. Dalton Schultz, again, played admirably and was awesome, but we really were excited to see Blake Jarwin's athleticism on display from week one all the way through. So he gets him back. We did get to see the Cowboys wide receivers all together, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb. But you're talking now about having the top three wide receivers that people make such a big deal about, rightfully so, the top tight end in Blake Jarwin, the complete and full offensive line, and ideally an Ezekiel Elliott who was playing at a much higher level than he you know, ultimately did throughout the 2020 season. And let me remind you that while Zeke did not play great in 2020, the one game where we did kind of see all this, at least on paper together in Los Angeles, like the first half of that game, I know I'm, I'm really focusing on a really small sample here. Zeke looked good. I mean, he looked good in that moment. And then the season happened and things broke and everything fell apart and yada, yada, yada. But Zeke did look good. And obviously, as Dak Prescott went down, as the offensive line continued to wither away, as everything happened and everything changed and everything got worse for the Cowboys on the season, Zeke did not play well. Tony Pollard played well, but that's the other thing. Like, you have to imagine that Tony Pollard's role will increase this season. Maybe Simi Fajoko gets involved. I mean, my overall point here is I don't know how you don't even see plus 175 compared to plus 600, which are dramatically, you know, you know better odds for Dak Prescott to win this or, or dramatically worse odds for these other players, however you want to look at it. My point here is even with that incredible gap in odds for the Dak Prescott and the field, I don't know how you don't take Dak Prescott to win comeback player of the year now. It feels like as virtual of a lock as there could possibly be, although football is obviously an unpredictable sport. But Dak Prescott, in my mind, is absolutely on pace to win comeback player of the year in 2021. He's probably going to be in contention for MVP. Like, that's the reality, too. We all expect this offense to be really good. They're probably going to win more games than their cohorts in the NFC East because the NFC East is so bad. Um, so all that being said, Dak Prescott, comeback player of the year. Dak Prescott, uh, MVP. Dak Prescott, QB1. On and on and on. Give Dak Prescott all the awards because he is really that good. And we're very lucky as Dallas Cowboys fans to have him as our quarterback. And so, yeah, it had been a while since we spoke about Dak Prescott, but I'm glad that we did. It felt good. It felt good to talk about Dak Prescott, you and me. Uh, once again, I'm RJ Ochoa. 
You know me from bloggingtheboys.com, SB Nation's home for Dallas Cowboys content. I mean this when I say it, that I love talking about the Dallas Cowboys. I love doing it with you. I love doing it with all of us here. Uh, so please subscribe to our Blog on the Boys YouTube channel right here. We have so many videos that we put out every week. We're working very hard. We're having all sorts of meetings to make sure that we have even better things on the horizon. We're very excited about what we have coming out soon. We have coming out long term. We're very excited for the season. It's going to be a good time. So uh, subscribe here to the YouTube channel. Make sure you check out bloggingtheboys.com and subscribe to our podcast network we have a podcast network where we have an episode that comes out every single day that's right every day you get a different dallas cowboys conversation different people different hosts different perspectives it's a whole lot of fun we are available on all major podcast platforms apple devices spotify search for blog of the boys hit subscribe leave a rating write a review those things really 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 help us out uh, i'm rjo Choa. like i mentioned you can follow me on twitter or instagram at rjo Choa. And uh, yeah, you can also, uh, you can do me a favor, right? Do me a huge favor. Uh, and I don't ask you for much, but do me a huge, huge, do me the ultimate favor, right? Have the best day ever. Have the best day of all time. I'm talking like just have the absolute best day. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.